Okay, so let's have a little discussion on torque. Here's what our analysis shows. Our analysis shows the, true, the truth about what's happened, a fully unconstrained truth about what's happening in a golf swing. So what you're looking at is where the, uh, an area of the swing where there's a big debate right now on how a golfer's torque in a club. First off, I want you to know that there's a lot of torque taking place out of the plane of the swing that the golfer's having to work really hard on to just to stabilize the beta acceleration. But that's a conversation that we'll get into in my new book. Let's just focus in on the so-called alpha in the plane of the swing. What you see here and what we're saying is when a golfer hits basically down on a ball uh, with an iron, you could see the angle of attack would be down forward. Uh, downward, this golfer hits six degrees down on the seven iron. That when you watch this golfer pull the club down right here, that as the golfer's pulling it down, there are some components of the force that are really important to know. Let me explain this to you. In my first book, I talked about three torques and one overall force. We saw the overall force quiver. In the next, so that would be four inputs. In the next book, we're gonna break down all the components of the force. We have a total of six inputs. We'll have force alpha, beta, gamma, torque alpha, beta, gamma. Let me give you a quick synopsis so you can understand uh, how silly this whole alpha controversy is. So, what we are saying and what our analysis shows, the analysis has been the same for 35 years. It championed at the, P at the USGA, that's a big deal. It's been published, that's a big deal. That as you watch the handle, take note of the handle of the club, how the golfer's forcing it, and take note of the center of mass of the club. And what I want you to note is that if you were constructing the overall force of the club and breaking it into components, I want you to notice that there would be a strong component present here, forward, component of the force forward this way as the golfer brings the club down. I think you can clearly see it there. The resultant force, the combination of all three, would probably point up somewhere this way towards the left side of the golfer's body is at this point. But the strong component forward is a big deal. What it is putting you in a position to have to do here is it's putting you in a position to have to apply a positive alpha torque at the handle. So as you can see here, this golfer is applying a positive alpha torque with their wrists as they come into contact. Now, you go back to the Manzella handle drag swing, he pulled it forward even more, keeping a component of the force even more forward, longer, which would require even more torque from your wrists in that alpha direction. Now, there could be a scenario where if the golfer at this point started to reverse the components of their force earlier to where they can reduce this forward component of the force and maybe almost pull back on it before impact. That golfer might change their dynamics and have a totally different torquing capacity. And that would show up in our analysis. And that showed up in this paper right here, the famous Nesbitt work and power paper where our equations are from. Our equations are not from the simplified 2D paper that everybody keeps referring to. And what you see here is that there were four subjects in the paper and three of the four were applying this positive torque at their wrists when they came into contact. But there was one golfer who was able to get a couple of Newton meters negative because of the way that he was able to pull out of that forward force early enough to pull back on it where he was able to apply a little negative torque. And other golf scientists who are attempting to enter the kinetics arena against a scientist who's been doing this for 35 years have only been able to produce negative torque. And I'm gonna to explain to you why in just a second. Now you look at this and you say, how different would these swings look? Because we've heard the other scientists and their minions say that no matter what it feels like, no matter what it looks like, it's negative. 
Well, let me pull up another picture for you. Okay, so this is this player that you see in the video that we were just looking at, and red is his hub path, green are his club head paths, and where it is at impact. You could see that forward shaft lean coming from a component of the force still being forward. So that's why this golfer would be up in that positive category. And if you look at my book, you'll see that those golfers hitting the iron shots were up around this category. You could see the female 18 handicap was just about peaking her alpha torque just at the end and dropped off. And that was something some, a golfer can do. If they, the way that they're forcing the club and the way that they're moving, that kinetic could exist, just like the Manzella handle drag swing. It's exactly what should happen. Now, everybody says, how's the negative possible then? Well, look at the scratch player. That's these clubs in the background, the, the, um, just the shaft and the club head from the Nesbitt paper. So what we did to help you see this is we superimposed them directly over each other at the point of impact. Take a look where this handle would be and where this club is. So just think of how much more this golfer had to pull back when you look right here, let's say in this part of the swing, look how much more he had to pull back this way with the handle to get that club to snap around. This golfer had impeccable timing, maximized their club head speed, and had zero angular power left at impact. Almost an ideal version of what you're trying to do. I think ideally you'd want to be at zero. Then you would be maximizing everything. So it's a reality though that with an iron shot and with an industry that has pushed people into having forward hands, hitting down, having an aiming point forward, that you're going to see positive alpha torque values in the modern golfer. Now, let me explain to you what the others are saying. The others are saying that at this point in the swing, that regardless of what it looks like, and regardless of anything at this final phase in the swing, that you as a golfer are torquing the club. They call it a couple. They are coupling or torquing the club in this direction, the backswing direction. So as you watch this golfer twist the club into impact, it's not what you're seeing, it's the opposite. It's everything is being torqued at the wrists in the backswing direction. And from just a golfing standpoint, you could see that that leads a lot of mystery into what the physics of the golf swing really would be. Uh, we don't see any possible way that this golfer, with this component of the force forward, can still be torquing in this direction. It wouldn't add up. Hopefully that helps you understand a little more about torque. I'm gonna to break this all down with equations in my new book. You're gonna see that the beta stuff is really interesting. Rotational resistance is a big deal also. Now, another reason, let's get back to our analysis, which is what we all really care about. When we come into contact here, when this player's coming into contact, that component of the force, which is forward, which is linearly accelerating, helping linearly accelerate that center of mass, it dominates over what you can do with your wrist torque-wise. This is where we look at the eye dynamic, where that center of mass, where it's rotating around, where the club is rotating around, around that particular point. It moves up above the wrists and compromises it. So now the, the, it's essentially a longer club, a bigger moment of inertia that the golfer has to overcome. What that does is that lowers the response from the golfer's torquing action. So just as a golfer is trying to torque, and you can see the effort in the handle there of torquing, it's being dominated over by the moment created from the force. And this is something we're gonna lay out nicely. So there's a lot going on in a golf swing. There's a reason why golf's so difficult. When you start to look at the kinetics though, it's pretty clear that what you see and what you feel is exactly what the kinetics will show. 
We're excited about bringing you the final um, part of the club analysis in this new book. I'm laying it out really well, I, I believe. Uh, Dr. Nesbitt has participated in two of the chapters, and I think you're really going to love it. And we're going to move on to Alpha Man now, and we're going to start to enter into a world of really refining and investigating what everybody's been talking about in ground reaction forces, as we're really going to see what happens through the body, and we're going to bring in uh, an analysis where we see the ground forces without the need for a force plate. So that's going to be real exciting, and hope everybody understands torquing a little better.